Hello, this is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle with a brief tutorial on combinations and permutations. This is a basic part of probability theory that we use to help us count or enumerate all of the different possible outcomes. To show you, I'll give you an example. Let's assume that we're hosting a dinner party and we invite five dinner guests. It's a diverse crowd including Superman, a magician, an artist, a policewoman, and a librarian. But let's also assume we're not the greatest host ever and we only have three chairs or seats at the dinner table. So we can first ask a permutation question and that is how many different ways can we seat three people at the table if, if we do care about the sequence or order. So permutation is denoted this way with two subscripts, notice that N and R, P for permutation and that means it's the arrangement of N objects taken R at a time. In this case we have five people so it's five objects and we want to seat them at the table three at a time so R equals three. The key word in this is the arrangement because a permutation does care about the sequence or, or the order of the objects that we draw R at a time. So for example if we seat at the table the artist, the magician, and Superman, that right here is a permutation. Now, if we take that same group of three, that excludes the librarian and the policewoman, but the order is different in this way, Superman, the artist, and the magician, see how that's the same people, but a different order? Well, that does count as a second and different, a distinct permutation. So that's the th thing about permutations. The formulas here it's given by this function here, n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. In this case, that would be n equals 5, because we have 5 people we invited to the dinner, divided by 5 minus r. r is 3, because we want to take 3 people at a time seated at the table. Now, combinations are similar, but a combination does not care about the sequence of the order. So it is given also here denoted with two subscripts, N and R, but a C instead of a P, C for combination. It's a selection of N objects taken R at a time. Notice instead of arrangement we're saying it's a selection because we do not care about the sequence or the order. So if we take that same group, the artist, the magician, and Superman, and if the order changes, it's the same combination. It does not count as a separate combination. So you can see we're always going to have fewer combinations than permutations. And in this case, the combination is given by n factorial divided by r factorial multiplied by the quantity n minus r factorial. And here is a shorthand notation for the combination n over r. In this case, you can see at the bottom, the answer turns out to be only 10 because we have a larger denominator. So we can try an example here. Given a set of seven letters, a, b, c, d, e, f, g, we can ask how many permutations of three letters and how many combinations of three letters. For permutations, this is the formula, and the answer would be 7 factorial because we have 7 letters divided by 7 minus 3 because we're taking 3 letters at, we're drawing 3 letters and so that's 5040 divided by 24 or 210 permutations of 3 letters out of a set of 7 210 and that's where remember sequence or order does matter we called permutations that's about the arrangement now for a combination of three letters, that's going to be a lower number. We have this formula here, so notice the difference is really, it's a permutation, but we add this three factorial in here because we're taking three letters. And so that turns out to be 210 divided by three factorial or 35 combinations of three letters as opposed to 210 permutations because there are several duplicates of combinations where the letters are the same but the order have changed. Okay so let me just show you how to do that in Excel real quick. Here I am in an Excel and first let's ask if there are 10 people how many different ways can we arrange or seat them at a table for four. 
So this is going to be a permutation because we do care about the arrangement. And so n is 10, r is 4. Here's the formula for that permutation. And Excel, as it oftentimes does, has a built-in function for us equals permut open parens. I take the number, in that case that's n, how many total objects? Well in this case we have 10 people, those are the objects. And we want to sit four at a time at the table, so comma four. That's the permutation formula right there, very simple. We get 5040. Now let me do one more example. What about a poker hand? I should say five card draw. Let me just say five card draw poker hand. So that would be a poker hand where we hold five cards in our hand, but we don't care about the order. In that case, that's a combination question because it's a selection. We're not caring about the arrangement. N equals 52 because we have 52 cards. R equals 5 because we're taking 5 at a time. Here's the formula for the combination. Here's that shorthand notation you'll recall. And as usual, Excel has a built-in function for us equals COM BIN. And it takes the same parameters as permutation. 52 cards in the deck, comma, we're, ta we're drawing five at a time. We're doing combination because we don't care about the sequence. And it turns out, I'll put a comma there, there are 2,598,960 combinations of five card selections for a five card draw poker hand. So that's combinations and permutations in a nutshell. Thank you for your time.